Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I want to wish you a very happy new year. Uh, I am super excited to be with you guys today. We're going to start our 2023 off with a 2022 year in review. Obviously we need to know what happened in 2022 as we kick off 2023. We'll focus on those items that made its way to a finished product uh, and were issued as final. So the FASB only issued six ASUs, which is pretty low for them. Uh, in the prior year, in 2021, they had issued 10, um, but previously they had gone into the teens and 20s. And so it was a slow year for the FASB and many of these standards are quite niche. Um, ASU 2020 amends hedging to introduce the portfolio layer method, which is going to replace the last of layer method and allow more layers to be hedged. ASU 2022-02, also in the financial instruments area, um, removes the concept of treble debt restructuring, but does add a couple of new disclosures in there um, due to CECL, right? So CECL is really addressing a lot of the need there. So remove the concept of TDR, uh, but do provide some additional disclosures. Uh, ASU 2022-03 was addressing some uh, diversity in practice due to an example. So it updated and corrected that uh, and addresses fair value measurement with equity securities that are subject to contractual sale restrictions and confirms that things like lockup agreements um, do not impact the fair value. If you outside of the, uh, you know, if you have Apple stock, and you agree not to sell it, that doesn't change the value of Apple stock, right? Apple stock actively trades. ASU 2022-04, which is our supplier finance programs, uh, provides some new disclosures in this area, kind of a new area uh, becoming far more popular. I heard uh, from a lot of people in 2022 that they have started to grow an interest in this area. Uh, and so a way of financing uh, and being able to make these types of purchases for working capital, et cetera. So um, no changes to recognition measurement, but is a new disclosure requirement there. Uh, ASU 202205 is transition guidance for uh, our insurance contracts, so long duration contracts. Um, that was actually issued back in 2018. 18. Um, it's been delayed. And uh, one of the things that they're doing is if you have actually sold um, or disposed of a contract, you don't have to do the full retrospective. And so they give a little bit of a change in the transition guidance there. Uh, and then our last one is just a change in the effective date. Uh, reference rate reform, again, the uh, last standard issued prior to COVID being a big thing. It was ASU 2020-04. And, uh, and as part of that, they uh, got this out there and uh, introduced a nice transition transition method for LIBOR going away. Um, but LIBOR didn't go away as planned. It was supposed to go away in 2021. It did not. It's going to continue to 2023. And so the sunset provision that was in topic 848 had to be extended. And so FASB did that in ASU 2022-06. Um, we are looking forward to several standards also being finalized in 2023, in particular in the area of leases. So keep your eye out for some more standards coming your way. Uh, Gatsby only had three, which is typical. Gatsby had gone through a period where they were issuing quite a bit, but they have some really large changes. They're working on revenue and expense recognition, the financial reporting model. So we had a little bit of a slower 2022. Uh, they did get out the omnibus. Uh, and so again, that's just a bunch of unrelated items that needed a technical correction. Uh, Gatsby 100, which moves the guidance out of the AICPA FASB guidance for accounting changes and error corrections, and then gives a government specific guidance there. And so again, that's going to amend GASB 62, which was when we brought all that guidance into the GASB world. We're going to have now GASB specific guidance. And then GASB 101, uh, we're compensated absences. So we're in the three digits now for GASB. It just feels like the years are flying by there. Uh, and again, provides a little bit more around the concept of PTO, right? So when it's not sick and it's not, um, you know, it's not vacation, uh, the guidance was not as clear. And so they started to provide some better guidance in that area. I will say the AICPA was probably the most prolific of all of them, introducing the quality management suite. So introducing for SQMS 1 and 2, which takes our old squashes, our quality control standards, and moves them to quality management. Some pretty big movement uh, there. So moving towards uh, a risk-based approach instead of a check-the-box approach, a far more... Um, it's going to be a lot more customized to the firm instead of sort of being, you know, one size fits all. So interested to see how that works. Uh, and then the related SAS and SARS, because again, as it, it applies to accounting and auditing services, uh, how do you use your quality management system at the engagement level? And so 146 and SARS 26 address that. 
Um, they also issued SAS 147 and 148. 147 is related to NOCLAR, which we will see pop up again when we talk about ethics. Uh, this was needed to make the ethics standards operable. Uh, and so it does require that the uh, the subsequent auditor talk to the predecessor auditor about fraud and non-compliance. And then SAS 148 makes some changes to AUC Section 935 for those of you who do single audits. That is where the guidance for single audits falls. Um, and in the last couple of years, they've issued SAS 142, 148. 45, and they forgot to really update 935 for them. So they do do some clarifications and corrections in particular of the appendix. So it'll be really helpful. Um, but from an ethics perspective, they did get quite a bit out there. Um, they did a technical correction for 529 plans. And so uh, they changed uh, some of the requirements around safeguards related to 529 plans. Uh, they did a revised um, uh, interpretation related to officers, directors, and beneficial owners. And so that's kind of in uh, in with what they were working on for loan transactions, which we'll see on the next slide. Uh, they did also, um, as they look at this, do that new interpretation related to non-compliance with laws and regulations or NOCLAR. Uh, and so that goes again with the audit standard there and does kind of help address both the employee side, if you are in business, as well as the public accounting side on what you can and cannot report from a non-compliance um, that and depending on what type of work that you're doing. They also addressed an updated unpaid fees. Uh, they moved to a more principles-based approach instead of the old rules-based approach, uh, which I think many people are excited about. Um, they also revised the definitions and interpretations related to loans, acquisition, and other transactions. Um, again, moving away from some bright lines there as well. And then probably the more popular of them, which was effective on December 31st of 2022. Many of these were effective on, uh, actually the whole slide here was effective December 31st of 2022, um, which was assisting client, attest test clients with implementing accounting standards, really trying to address, um, you know, what can you do and what can you not do with regard to implementing these standards in particular leases was a hot topic. Um, post revenue recognition, they really wanted to make sure that uh, the auditor wasn't crossing the line in the implementation, particularly for smaller entities who may not have the financial financial reporting capabilities for some of these more large and complex standards. Um, they also issued some new TQAs for ethics, which I think is always important to point out. Um, and these are related to um, the in, uh, Information System Services Standard, which was effective January 1 of 2023, uh, and trying to give a little bit more of an understanding of how you use the, um, the rules within there uh, from a more principles-based approach. And so they kind of give you some professional judgment concepts that you can apply. So 2022 was a pretty busy year. Um, it was slower for some standard setters, but we have these big projects that are going on. And so we're not surprised by them. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a year in review. And I wanna thank you guys so much for your support. We have some great readership uh, on our uh, newsletter that comes out once a month. And we have some great blog readers uh, on a regular basis who are uh, giving us feedback. So I really appreciate that. So we have, uh, it's been a joy to work with all of you and we hope that 2023 brings lots of peace, joy, happiness, and awesome busy season. So I want to thank you guys so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.